There's no question people are pivoting their business models forward looking at the international markets. When we look at how many jobs that are created as a result of the exporting of agricultural products, it's somewhere around one million in the U.S. The U.S. farmer is very resourceful and can produce more per acre than anyone anywhere else in the world. We're going to have to become more competitive going forward because our competition is increasing across the world. With the export markets providing such a rich place for our crop to go, it's, it's kept the economics of the industry looking very favorably. It opens up the market opportunity from a saturated North American market to new products and to new customers. The future for export and agribusiness is huge. If we can grow it, we can ship it. The farmers producing food in the United States are the most sophisticated producers of food in the history of mankind. The American farmer is feeding the world, a world that will be home to 9 billion people by the year 2050, a world with more prosperous emerging economies and growing middle classes, a world where people are upgrading their diets and striving for the same quality of life that Americans have long enjoyed. But what do these trends really mean for farmers, ranchers, and cooperatives here in the U.S.? How big really is the opportunity and the challenge? Can America's global advantage in agriculture be sustained? You know, I'm often asked the question of why agricultural exports are doing so well. What is it about American agriculture that distinguishes it from other types of agriculture around the world? And I think it, there are several things. One, the productivity of our farmers. Uh, they are just enormously efficient and enormously productive. The quality of what they produce, uniform, uh, people can rely on it. And because we have a quality transportation system that supports our productive farmers, we're able to get it to market more quickly and more efficiently so it's more affordable. So when you have quality and quantity and affordability, it's pretty tough to beat that in the international market. From corn, wheat, and soybeans, to meat and dairy products, to cranberries, citrus, and cotton, foreign markets are an increasingly vital source of demand. American agribusiness exported more than $140 billion in products in 2013. That represents growth of 135% over export totals a decade ago. Probably in terms of, of the tonnage we export from the United States, it probably represents between 20 and 25% of, of our overall agricultural production. When you put it in terms of dollars, it's probably closer to 30 to 35% of the value of farm cash receipts. Any way you want to look at it, it's important, representing a fifth to a third of our business, and, and therefore it's quite important and significant to the, to the industry. When I started farming, uh, it was said that one farmer fed about 70 people. Today it's double that, over 150 people around the world are fed by one producer in the United States. It's an exciting time to be in agriculture, it's an exciting time because of that expansive global market that has uh, provided us with a great opportunity. Our customers really are feeding the world, and it's a privilege to stand by them and serve them as they work to fill a vital need for people all over the globe. The numbers alone tell much of the story. Soybean exports to China have averaged 23 million metric tons per year over the last five years, more than doubling the average for the previous five years. Mexico is our third largest market at $18 billion of grains, protein, and other products every year. And South Korea imports more than $5 billion a year of American agricultural products, making the U.S. its top supplier of foreign food and fiber. America has a very good infrastructure for exporting of agricultural products. The other countries, they just export when they have an abundant product, but this country, the United States, can export as much as they want. That's a very good advantage over other exporting countries. Across every sector of agriculture, producers have adapted their business practices to better address the growing export opportunity. I think we have to work under the assumption that everything that we deliver could potentially be exported around the world. It, it's not 
delivering to our local elevator and that being the end of our story anymore. Obviously, when you're trying to farm, you want to do the best job you can, maximize your profits, and uh, knowing you have those export markets that have been increasing gives us a place to go with the extra crops that we produce. The Japanese love great Florida grapefruit, and uh, so they're eating that fresh and almost as a delicacy to the Japanese they like perfect looking fruit, so we really grade hard to give them the product that they like. Like the farmers they serve, cooperatives have evolved their business models in a way that enables them to plug in to fast growing international markets. Farmer owned cooperatives are investing hundreds of millions of dollars every year in new facilities, new lines of business, and new marketing initiatives in order to help their members capitalize on the export opportunity. One such cooperative is Blue Diamond. Blue Diamond is the leader in all things almond. We are the, the founders in many ways of the modern almond industry here in California. 103 years ago, this co-op formed with California almond growers. Uh, today, we are the dominant player in, in every major global market. Fully 83% of the world's almonds come from California. And they're consumed differently in different countries. What Blue Diamond has been involved with in many of these markets is providing new ways to enjoy almonds. We see increases in demand for almonds around the world for a, a number of factors. One is the growth in middle class incomes around the world, which allows people the opportunity to buy more healthy, more nutritious food. We also see shifts in demographics. As populations age, they become a little more conscious of healthy food, and almonds fits right into that. Blue Diamond exports almond products to more than 90 countries around the globe. A full 70% of the almonds its grower members produce is consumed outside the U.S. in products ranging from chips, crackers, and snacks to almond milk. Clinton Schick is a third-generation almond grower and the chairman of the Blue Diamond Board. He understands the importance of accessing new markets and the value gained by being a cooperative grower. If you go back a few years, we began to be aware that the, um, quote, middle class consumer in places like China and India, the populations of those middle class people as defined by who can afford to buy nuts was as large as the uh, market here in the United States. And the per capita consumption, on the other hand, was very small compared to the per capita consumption up here in the United States. So it was just a ready-made market for us to move into. I think one of the nice things about uh, belonging to Blue Diamond is it's the ultimate in vertical integration. Those processing opportunities have created real benefits economically for the farmer. We are a co-op of just over 3,000 almond growers and we have growers that are five acres and we have growers that are many thousands of acres and yet they're able to participate uh, as a part of this great global brand that competes against the largest food companies in the world in many major categories and many major uh, countries. The idea that as a grower that they're part of a company that's advertising in the Olympics or is, is launching Almond Breeze into Japan is really something that is extraordinary. Dr. Kareen Alexander of Purdue University says cooperatives like Blue Diamond play a vital role in helping American farmers access foreign markets. If you think about cooperatives, they are an amazing vehicle where farmers can come together and organize either to uh, gain efficiency in terms of purchasing inputs or in terms of coordinating to uh, vertically integrate and offer new products in the supply chain. So there's lots of great examples where cooperatives have allowed farmers to play a part in the full value chain and full supply chain of agricultural products all the way from the inputs to the final consumer. If you look at what cooperatives are doing today, they're involved in almost every layer of the agricultural value chain. They provide vital inputs like seeds, fuel, and fertilizer. They store, process, and market ag commodities. Many have built globally recognized brands and are continually investing in new products that will increase demand for what their farmer members produce. The cooperative system in this country is a big reason for our success globally, and it will provide a sustainable competitive advantage going forward. A key part of CoBank's mission is to support cooperatives and other U.S. agribusinesses participating in export markets. 
The bank provides loans for capital investments, seasonal financing, and has a multi-billion dollar export finance portfolio. CoBank and Farm Credit's role in, in supporting the opportunity that exists in these markets is to make sure we have a consistency of capital, we understand the value chain proposition that exists, whether it's on the farm input side to support that flow of product, whether it's the processing, whether it's the infrastructure at a port facility. We need to be aware and, and available to be able to provide the credit to support that growth opportunity. The capital requirements for American agriculture today are enormous, and they're getting bigger every day. It takes continuous investment in equipment, in technology, in efficiency, in safety, and in marketing to remain competitive. That's true for producers, and it's true for their cooperatives as well. The mission of CoBank and our Farm Credit Association partners is to make sure that capital is readily available whenever it's needed, regardless of conditions in the market. The list of competitive advantages that America enjoys in the global marketplace is long indeed. A temperate climate and good soils, abundant water and high quality transportation infrastructure, cutting edge technology, and research institutions that help farmers continuously improve their yields. But the biggest advantage of all may be the character and commitment of the American farmer to feed the world. It's the entrepreneurial spirit of the American farmer. We, we always find a way to improve and we embrace technologies every chance that we can to better our operation and, and move forward. Oh, personally, it's very satisfying. It's, uh, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, you know you're doing something good. You know, we're stewards of the land, we're conservationists, we're providing green space, and we're providing a very uh, nutrient-rich food that's excellent for you. You really have to be a top professional businessman in order to be a farmer today. I have a lot of friends that I invite out to ride in my combine and my tractors. They always go away and say, I can't believe that that's what you do out there. I, I had no idea. So I enjoy doing that because I think each one of those people will probably go back and tell somebody else what's really going on out here on the farm. And um, it really is an amazing story that we have to tell. One thing I do know, the future of agriculture will always be bright here in America because we've got the greatest farmers in the world. Uh, we've got the greatest technology in the world. We have terrific infrastructure that supports them. And because the American brand is so well thought of around the world, there will always be export opportunities and there are emerging new domestic market opportunities that hold out a lot of promise for American agriculture. <laughs>